Today we're going to be talking about something that may be hindering me and possibly you from getting the results that we want. Spin it. Hey DMD family, welcome back to another Discs MD video. Bunky here. And before we get started, look, got my new mics. Now that it is not a caterpillar on my shirt, it is actually Mike a mic. Thank you to Mikey for the recommendation for the new mics. Uh, I think they're awesome, so you'll have to tell me how the sound is. Uh, I think they work great. So, moving forward, new mics, better sound, awesome. Uh, also, I got word this week from Lone Star Discs that I will be representing them for the 2025 season once again. So thank you to Sheldon Jefferson and Terry Dillard, the whole Dillard family, for allowing me to continue to represent the Lone Star Disc brand. I love their discs, love their plastics. There's a link in the description below, 10% off. They run deals all the time too. So if you haven't tried Lone Star Plastic, I recommend trying it. It's it's nice. I love it. Uh, and I love the, the range of discs that they have. Also, talk to Ryan from Salty Unicorn, which is my jerseys that I wear in every video that you see. Uh, I would wear these things all of the time if I could, but my wife likes me to wear something other than disc golf shirts every once in a while. So these things are the most comfortable and the most visually pleasing shirts <laughs> that I've ever worn. So also a link in the description below. I'll have a new link for the upcoming year coming soon in upcoming videos. So if you want to wait for that one, uh, you can wait for that one as well. But there is a link in the description below for Salty Unicorn Disc Golf Apparel. Go help them out. Get their stuff. It's good stuff. All right. So today we're going to be talking about something that I've been thinking about for about a month or so. And it's something that's been, I think, hindering me from progressing and reaching my goals as far as being able to throw good distance with my disc. I, I do a lot of form work. Uh, I focus a lot on form. And it seems that I've gotten to a place where I'm sort of just plateauing. And uh, I, I, don't, I, I didn't understand why. Uh, but as I thought about it, I, I believe that for me, there's one reason, uh, one big reason that I am no longer progressing. And maybe somebody else can identify with this as well. But it is up close with Bunky. This thing right here, my net. Now, I understand that the net is a very important tool in our arsenal of tools for practice. And before I start getting hate in the comments below, I am not telling you to stop throwing in a net. But my focus for the past almost year has been throwing into this thing. And I think that the reason I have hit the plateau is because I'm neglecting throwing in an open field. So in today's video, I want to go over some of the benefits of the net, but also some of the ways in which this might be hindering me from progressing even farther with my distance. And if you stay to the end of the video, I'm going to give you another tip on how I intend to start scoring better on the course. Let's get into it. Okay, so some of the ways in which the net benefits us. I think there are three things, really, three big benefits to using the net. The first one is, well, hello, that is my house right there. <laughs> convenience. It's convenient. Like I can walk out of my back door right there, walk 50, 60, 70 feet, set up my net, bring out my discs and start throwing. It's that simple. No driving, no distance. It's just getting out in my backyard Within five minutes, I'm throwing it to the net. Extremely convenient. Benefit number two, reps. I can get a lot of reps in a very short amount of time with my net. I have a stack of 10 discs here and I'll just rattle through. Oh, and not knock them off. I could just rattle through my drills. Uh, I can set up my camera and video myself. And even if I, review each throw between throws, I can get through a stack of discs in about five minutes, a stack of 10 in about five minutes. That means I can get through 50 throws in about 25 minutes. Walk out, set up, 
25 throws reviewing, or 25 minutes, 50 throws reviewing each of those throws to make sure my form's accurate. I can get a lot of reps in with the net. And the third thing is accessibility. Like I have a wreck that is right across the street from me, right? It's five minutes up the road. It's not too far, but I'm not the only one that uses that wreck. Like last night, I tried to shoot this video. I got this portion of the video shot and then went over to the wreck and what happened? Soccer. <laughs> I couldn't use the wreck because somebody was on it. Or if I'm there throwing discs and somebody wants to come and use the baseball field or the soccer field or use the field for whatever, I can't take up the entire field myself and, and hog the entire field just because I want to throw discs. I can't kick everybody off, it's public. So accessibility, like here, I don't have to contend with anybody for use of this space, it's mine. And nobody interrupts me. I mean, with the exception of the occasional child or dog, but accessibility, it's very accessible. So using the net, it's an important thing and we need to do it, but we cannot neglect throwing in a field. Now, maybe I missed some benefits of the net. And if I have, if you have more benefits, drop them in the comments below. But right now we're gonna go over to the rec and we're gonna talk about some ways in which the net may be hindering us from seeing progress in our distance. Let's get to it. All right, so here we are at the rec. And like I said, it took me a while. For you, it was a second. But for me, it was about 10 to 15 minutes to get loaded up in the van, drive over here to the wreck, get everything down, get everything set up. So again, less convenient to come out here. But some of the issues that I'm finding or that I feel happen when I use a net, I think there's three big issues with using a net too much, right? Too much. I'm not saying don't use a net. Again, I'm not saying don't use a net, but I think we need to limit the net usage and get out into the field more, at least I do. I don't know if you find this to be the true, but I need to get out into the field more for three reasons. First is mindset. I don't know if this applies to anybody else, but the, my, my mindset when I'm throwing in front of a net, as opposed to when I come out to a field or when I'm on a course is completely different. Like I feel different throwing into the net than I do throwing into an open field or on the course because when I'm throwing into the net, all I'm worried about is my form. Am I reaching back correct? Is my coil right? Am I hitting deep enough in the pocket? But when I'm in a field or when I'm on the course, I'm worried about what? Hitting a spot way out there. I'm either worried about hitting a line or I'm worried about getting distance on the disc. I'm worried about the result. I'm not worried about the catalyst for the result. So to me, that's one big, big hindrance in the net. I don't practice the way I play, right? I'm, as a coach, as a softball coach, that's what I preach in my practices all the time. We need to practice the way we play. Well, I don't play into a net. I play into a field or I play on a course. So I need to practice that way. And a majority of my practice, I would say, needs to be here at, or at a course. The minor minority needs to be, we can get into that later, and I know that's going to be a, an argument with some people, but I think the minor minority of our practice needs to be in the net. I think the majority of it needs to be in an open field or at a course. The second thing is... <sighs> flight path. In a net, you can't see that. You can't get the visual validation of what your disc is doing. Whether you're hitting your right angle, whether you're hitting your right launch angle, whether the nose angle is right and the disc is doing what it's supposed to be doing. Yes, I know we have the tech disc and I understand that and I love the tech disc. I had a discussion with Clint from It's Blitz on Discord about this and I agree with him, the tech disc is probably the single most valuable tool to improving form that we have. But there is nothing like seeing the results of a disc flight from your throw and having that tell you what you can and should adjust. I, I get it, use a tech disc, yes, please use a tech disc. It is a very important tool, very useful, great tool. But getting out into a field and watching the flight of a disc is just as important. 
it's just as satisfying too. <laughs> I mean, it feels good to watch a disc soar through the air. So we can't get flight path in a net. We have to come out to the field. And the last thing is hitting lines. Like in a net, I don't necessarily care where the disc is going as far as the horizontal plane. Like if I'm hitting it on time or, or releasing or grip locking, I worry about the feel of that in the net, but I really don't worry about what that looks like. Like I'm worried so much about in here that once it gets to here, I'm not quite as concerned with that. But when I get to an open field or on a course, I am very concerned if, with, am I hitting my line? Like, am I early, release, early releasing? Am I late releasing? Am I walking up correctly? Right, getting into a, throwing into a net, it's not as good to help us judge whether we're hitting our lines or not. In order for us to do that, I believe the best way is in a field or on a course. So, those are three benefits to using the net and three ways I think the net is hindering me from progressing it to even greater heights and greater limits with my throws. So now, the bonus tip of how I plan to focus on practice and helping me to score better when I'm on the course. Let's get to it. All right, bonus tip. If I figure it out the cool video and audio graphics, that'll look really awesome. Otherwise, I'll just look ridiculous. Anyway, bonus tip for you, how I'm planning on improving scoring on the course and in tournaments coming up. No, I'm not getting rid of it. No, I'm not cutting it out, but I'm cutting down on it drastically. I am reducing the amount of time that I am focusing on power backhand throws. And I think we all should, because right now, I would venture to say that about 90% of my time, even if it's 85 or 80% 80 of my time on that, it's too much. L let me frame this by asking you this question. How many full send it throws do you make during the course of a typical round? Like if I think about the hardest course that I play around me, I can say pretty confidently that I have maybe nine full send it throws on that course. And unless you're a touring pro, I would venture to say that's probably the same for most of us. I mean, let's let's even be let's even be generous and say you have one full send it throw per hole. That's 18 throws. How many throws are you making during a typical round? I would probably say most of us are throwing mid 60s. 62, 63, 64 throws around. That's if we're playing par golf. That's less than 20 less than 30% of our throws. That's in the 25% range of our throws are full send it throws. And yet I'm spending 80% of my time working on them. We need to even out how we're practicing. There are so many other throws besides the power backhand throw that affect our scoring. I would say that we would we should split it up 40, 30, 30. 40% of our time on power throws, 30% of our time on approach shots, and 30% of our time on putting. Now, that's just me throwing out numbers. That's not a hard, fast rule that anybody needs to follow, and that may adjust from time to time for me. But I think we really need to cut down on how much time we're spending on pure power form drilling and get into finesse touch shots, how to throw any approaches, how to throw hammers, how to throw thumbers, how to throw scubers, how to putt from stagger, from straddle, from a knee. Uh, there are so many other things that we need to improve upon and we're spending far too much time on one area that is the minority of our throws when it comes to scoring. So for me, this coming off season, and the upcoming year, I'm going to spend less time on perfecting my power throwing and more time on the other areas that were gonna help me to score better on the course and in tournaments. I'm not gonna neglect it, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I'm stopping my form reviews or my coaching sessions with Josh. 
but my practicing, my practice sessions will be more evenly split so that I can score better on the course. And let's see what happens the, the upcoming year. Well, there you have it. That's all I have for you today. I hope this information helped you out if you're struggling with it. If it did, drop a like, drop a comment, hit the thumbs up. I already said that. Share it with your friends. And as always, thank you for your support. You guys watching means the world to me. And I'm hoping that I'm helping you out uh, in a positive way. But until next time, enjoy the journey. Here's your verse of the day.